Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 16 of the series where I ramble on about stupid shit because I don't know how to shut up sometimes. But, whatever. We've got goals in mind and we need to grab our money because I already forgot after the course of like 3 seconds what I was doing. Because, we're taking our money, we're going to the trader, and we're going to see if he's got some claw hammers. Because we, by gosh diddly damn it, need some goddamn claw hammers. And some pistol ammo probably wouldn't hurt, but whatever. We are running. We're going to make it there. We're going to do what we damn well do. So, as I was talking last episode, because I tend to use my shiny hunting as the easy talking point for me, it's something I've done for minimum three years, and one of my recent shinies was evidently... I wanted uh, kind of like the randomness of it. I wanted to save it until the end and have the whole journey come full cycle and be like, this was the shiny that I started my journey with that started me on going for the living decks and now I'm just finishing it with this mon to be kind of like yeah but I was also lazy recently and I was like I don't care I just want to fucking get it done because it's a mon I own and well <clears throat> so first mon that I got that started my journey for the living decks was a, well originally it was a hoot hoot but I carried it all the way through heart gold soul silver and it obviously became a noctowl which I loved it. The thing was amazing. I found it before the first gym and easily the best thing about that game was finding that Nocta that hoot hoot, training it to a Noctowl, carrying it all the way through through the Victory Road in Elite Four into the ri the rematch I don't think I did the rematch with N though. No not N, uh red. I don't think I did red. Yeah, I gave up before red because I was way too much grinding and I didn't feel like dealing with it. So, but, anywho, that shiny's been there for a while. He's been, that little hoot hoot that I called how the fuck, how TF even, because that was before, that was like when I started, think, considering doing shiny hunting. Like, I didn't have it fully set up in my mind that I was going to be shiny hunting as much as I do now. If you had told to me three years ago that, hey, by the way, you're going to love shiny hunting, and it's going to keep you going for like three years of something to do. I'd probably laugh you off and be like, bullshit. No fucking way my dumb ass would stay glued to a task for that long. Oh, I did. Still have. Still am working on it. And I just pulled the shiny hoot hoot. You're seeing this... Well, let's see. I'm recording it on the 13th because I'm going to bulk record a lot of episodes today. And... Uh, this will probably go up. You're going to be seeing this like near the end of the month, so it's not that far off, but I'll probably have found a few more since before then. So, I've got oodles of time to shiny hunt when I got some days off. And plus, I don't work that many hours in a day when I do work. So, I am able to come home, shiny hunt, keep it going. I still edit the videos for the channel and do all that fun stuff, so have no fear. We got this. But, shiny hunting. Who who got, like, originally, I my original inspiration for shiny hunting was a shiny Pidgeot that I had. Emphasis on had, because I lost the game that had it and about two to three hundred mons in it. Yeah. Biggest of fucking Fs. I was pissed. Like, for about a week... I was tearing my house apart, doing everything I fucking could to try and find that game because I was so devastated without that game. Like, for a while, I was sitting there like, all the work I've done for the last three years, just down a fucking drain because I was too stupid to not keep track of this game that is more valuable than, like, any game in my collection. And that really would have been any game. Because it took way too long to get the shiny living decks. And then for me to just lose it like that, I was a dumb fuck. What the, is that something like there's food here? Or is that a campfire? It's a campfire. Hmm. Alright, well, let's dump some of that in there and queue up some waters while we wait. Oh. Oh, I don't have a thing, damn it. I need a cooking pot. Oh, I can at least start up the fire and keep warm. I don't really need to, though. 
name. Whatever. So, so yeah, I've been doing that. The Hoot Hoot I recently got was pretty good. Probably another annoying hunt that I just got done with recently was for Shiny Tyrogue and the entirety of the Hit the Hitmon line. The Hitmon Lee, Hitmon Top, Hitmon Chin. Oh, I can't take that tree. Then don't put it there, asshole. Acting like I can't take a tree because it's right next to your goddamn property. Hippy well, hoppy, get the fuck up out of your property. So, anyway. Tyrogue was annoying because I had to sit around and actually EV train a Pokemon, which I don't like to typically do. Because EVs are something you'd use for competitive Pokemon battling. That it just boosts up your stats. That's all. It just says, okay, well, it's like having a certain nature. Like how, if any of you watch the Heart Gold Soul Silver verses. Wait. You're still open? Wait, what? Let me in, damn it. I gotta see if you got some shit. No, oh, don't you dare throw me out of here. Looking for something. He resets tomorrow. Alright, that's not so bad. Secret stash, you got anything? Fertilizer, pistol book, pistol. Don't need none of that. Probably use the pistol book, but I don't care. Don't need that, don't need that. Do you have. Ooh, repair kits are nice. Could use a repair kit. Ooh, but I don't need it. Don't need that. Not specifically. Oh, you suck. Fuck you. I was a patron, you douche. It's not even an even hour. You're just kicking people out for the fun of it. So, alright. But, shiny hunting. Tyrogue's annoying because in order to evolve it to Hitmon Lee, you need to have its attack higher than its defense. Which, okay. In retrospect, that's not so bad. Hitmonchan is the opposite. The defense needs to be higher than the attack. Okay, it's not so bad. Hitmon Top has to have the attack and defense be the exact same. Now you might be saying, well, that doesn't sound like it's too bad. Yeah, when you look at Tyrogue and it has the exact same base, it's a base 35 stat mon across the board, meaning theoretically, if you had a neutral nature and all of your individual values, meaning the things that determine how high your stats go naturally are the, the exact same and your growths don't change at all like you're putting them in the daycare all of their stats will be the same by the time they hit level 100 or level whatever so that's not so bad issue comes okay i'm going for hitmonchan so i need the defense i think it's defense is higher than attack for hitmonchan no, Hitmonchan, it was a pain. No, Hitmonchan needs attack higher than defense. And that was a pain because it not only had a, def a physical defense boost in nature, it also had the only good IV that I could judge on it had a very good defense IV, meaning its stat was way higher, the attack IV was way low. So, of course, that's the one I picked to be a freaking Hitmonchan, which, if anything, I think that just proves... There's more of a challenge to doing it, so I didn't care as much. I mean, I cared because it took me, like, four hours to get the damn Hitmonchan to be just right, because I had to keep putting it through a mock battle to get it to see what its stats would be like when it hit the highest level it was going to hit in that training. Because, yeah, they do evolve at level 20, and it would be simple as, well, if I didn't have the XP share, get it to level 20 with the stats the way I want it, swap it out, and battle everything else but the way the base is set up for the xp setup it's a little bit tedious and annoying it's a little annoying but it's manageable because of how easy and accessible the bases are or like the because in omega ruby you have the options of adding friends to your secret base via like qr codes or getting a code out of like if they give you a specific code. Really? This far out? You suck. So, anywho, back to to eventually finish my goddamn story. There is a way. There are people online. You can look them up for QR codes for Blissey bases, which that means the a the creator of the base will have you do a triple battle with them which is just a three-on-three out-front battling, which means, like, three mons are on the field from each side at a time. 
and all three of them are Blissey on their side, which are, is the highest EXP yielding Pokemon in the game. So, you really want to battle against a bunch of Blisseys when you can. Only issue is that you can do that once per day. But, you can also, after defeating them, because the Blisseys are built to kill themselves in one way or another, you can add them into your base. Now, the reason they put the bases in, the reason those trainers are like that in their base is because initially the reason was Healing Wish, the only move those Blissies have built on them, was quote unquote bugged, where it wouldn't work properly. But what I've found is if you beat them at their base and then add them to your base, it takes them out of their base. But they're, when they're in your base, they're defaulted down to single battle format and the Blissey just killed themselves and you're getting free experience for it. Which made it easier to get that Tyrogue leveled up and everything that I have in that game leveled up because it takes all of about 13 seconds for me to sit down and level up really because the only issue comes to killing the last one which, oh boy, kill one more, not so bad, but to kill the last one you kinda, if you're a low level mon just trying to hold the lucky egg and get as much experience as you can get it can take a bit. Granted, they poison themselves with the Toxic Orb, so they take a little bit of residual damage, but I'm out of range. Yeah. So it's not the easiest, and when you're a low-level mom with a really low attack stat, attacking stats, whew, sorry, it's early, and it can kind of be a little annoying, and it takes a little bit for that last one only, but by then the Tyrogues were getting to like level 30, 31, I think. I think it was 31. Something weird, like it was just off the stat count, but you go that, and then you would get, I'd see what the stats looked like. And it took me three or four mock runs, like I said, to get it actually where I wanted it to be. Really tedious. Am I wearing something that's dragging down my heat? Oh, that's probably why. There we go. Let that amp me up a little bit, because I'm wearing shorts and a heavy jacket trying to stay warm. Sounds like people in New York. No winter. But... Anywho, so I got Tyrogue done, Hitmonchan was done, Hitmon Top, well Hitmon Top was the one I had to get first. Yeah, Hitmon Top was the one I had to put a lot of work into. Like Hitmon Top was a fucking journey and a half, because for those to be exactly even, its stats weren't lining up the right way, I put a ton of EVs into attack, then I put a bunch into defense, and it was like, then I went through like three or four, and that was just pure RNG if it was going to work or not, because I went through so many simulations where it was like I think I dumped about a hundred EVs into just attack to try and bring the stats up to even because at low levels you don't notice the EVs like for those of you that think oh well if I can crank 252 EVs total into a stat and that'll put it as high as it's gonna get why wouldn't I do that at a low level and end up with a mon that'll have because like, I think it's EVs are four EVs per one stat point I believe it's either four or eight but you put those in and it's like oh well pff, okay I can deal with that that's not even that bad how is that such a hard thing to deal with and you get overpowered mons in the beginning of the game you don't see the full value of EVs until like level 50 to 100 and you might say well why would I mean, by the time you're at level 50 you're getting ready for the elite four which if you put that effort in the beginning game to have a good nature, put EVs into a stat, and keep committed to that stat the entire game, you are doing very good for yourself. Like, I couldn't do it. I tried it, and to me, it was way beyond brutal. Like, it's... I went EV training once, and I made, like, a shitty competitive team off of, like, six mons I got through Wonder Trade. Yeah, it sucked. It was absolute dog shit of a team, but it was still a decent journey, so I didn't care that much. Only issue came to when I tried to actually go into battles with people, but, you know, Gen 6. Everybody had hacked in teams, their stats were flawless, everybody was rocket. For the most part, sorry, I'm yawning because it's early in the morning, but... Everybody was rocking, like, teams of 6 shinies, max IVs, max EVs in the perfect stats, the best moveset for all the coverage, and... Their natures were flawless. Everything about them just screamed perfection. Meanwhile, what am I doing? I'm over here with my fucking team of six that I got through Wonder Trade that 
two of them are shiny, probably hacked in. Their move sets cover like two types. And other than that, I ain't done shit. And the EVs, I dumped like 20 EVs into a stat because those mons also carried me through the main game, which isn't the best for EV training. Because by the end of it, you'll end up probably with a decently balanced mon for stats, but it's like you're not going to have the best overall competitive Pokemon. So, there's always that. God damn it, will this trader open up? I'm sitting here mining at the stone out in front of his goddamn business because he won't open up. And his stock resets today, so get some new shit. I mean, the repair kit would have been nice, but you can make the repair kit on your own, and it's not terrible, but I'm looking mainly for, like, the claw hammer. So, once I get the claw hammer, I'll be in great shape. So, anyways. Yeah, EV training is not fun. And even with Omega Ruby putting in, like, the, the super training mini games, I think they're called, yeah, they still suck because you're only getting a small fraction of EVs. And yeah, you get a punching bag for it that'll boost your stats by way more than the minigames are worth. And you get punching bags that double the amount of uh, points you're getting when you do the training. Yeah, but it's like, why would I do that? You could also do it the old school way of beating the living, like, knocking out mons that give EVs and having to hunt specifically for that mon. And with Dexnav, you can do it easily. And, so, and Sun and Moon made it even better because if you the SOS method gives you an ass ton of EVs. Like, if the normal Pokemon would give you two EVs, the SOS method, I think if you get to a certain chain, they're dumping like 10 plus EVs per mon. And then it goes up and up based on how long your chain is. I think the max chain that you have goes to like 255 or something like that. And once you get to that point, the Mons are giving you like 20 to 30 EVs, I believe, was the last I heard out of one of the YouTubers I watched that does competitive stuff. It's like, wow. It's actually amazing how high up they actually get in stats. And, you, and then with XP share, there's the fucking... Uh, like the mock, the, not the, the macho brace is one of them, but it's like the fucking power, I think the power items, that's what they are. Because there's certain items that'll increase how much you're, like you double a certain stat, girl, like how much you're getting for a certain stat, but it like, it, they decrease your speed, how much you earn in speed, or they drop your speed EVs or something, which you can then just kill them on with some speed EVs, and, like Zigzagoon or something, and just, <laughs> there you go, running around, don't even care, but... It's not, it's not for me. I don't do EV hunting. I don't, m none of my shinies are built to be competitive that I get. Which, granted, I also did for a short time have a shiny hunting business, which sucked. It was funny because it was like for a small niche group of college kids that were too lazy to shiny hunt themselves. But they liked the way some of them looked and I told them, I was like, well, you give me, you pay me X dollars, I'll get you X shiny. And I only did two competitive Shinies. I don't remember what they were, but it was a bitch. I remember that much. It was fucking hell to try and get them because I went through like five or six different shinies for some of those hunts. And it was like, then when I finally got them and gave them to the guy and they gave me, I think it was like, I made it like 50 bucks. But it was so bad. It was horrible. Like, it took way, way too long to get them. And by the time I fucking gave him to the kid, he was like, well, my team doesn't really need that anymore. I kind of need other Pokemon. And I'm like, I'm not doing another fucking competitive hunt. Nothing against you, buddy. But this is fucking brutal. I'm just going for a living, Dex. And you're over here hunting the world to build a fucking team. I don't even know if he did anything with it. Honestly, I feel like he just wanted to have the shiny. And then used it for competitive as an excuse. The wood in there, turn this on. I'm sick of my guy getting cold. So, we're gonna sit, gather around the campfire, and talk about our shit. So, did that for a little bit. And business was alright. I did, I think I didn't do much. But those guys also didn't have a lot of money either, so I wasn't like milking them for every dollar I could get. But I was nice enough to do it. I didn't really care. I didn't get anything really out of it. I was just, I got the shiny hunt. 
I kept some of the duplicates I got, and then after a while I started just doing the, uh, like I would just tell people, like, look, I'm not doing competitive, I'm not doing a specific move set. I'm not doing any of that fancy shit. You get this mon, if it has the nature you want, great. It'll have the nickname you want, I don't care. I'm not dealing with everything you're getting here. Like You get this small little thing and that's it. And most people were alright with that, but then other people were like, well, I wanted it for competitive, so why can't I have it for competitive? It's like, shut up. <laughs> You don't get it for competitive. You get it for being shiny. You want it to be competitive, you freaking hunt it. And some of the guys went and did that and acted like they were spiting me. And I'm like, I don't care. I had a hug. Can I pick these? Oh, you can pick the berries and crap, but you can't, like, do anything with them. Or you can't, like, break anything within his borders. But, whatever. So, shiny hunting... Like, then I kind of translated the what I was doing for those guys into, hey, well, why don't I just go for the living decks? And then I just... When I first started, Shinies were spitting out left and right. Like, I would start a hunt and be done with it. Like, when I first did Shiny hunting, pulling three to four Shinies a week was nothing. Pulling three to four in a day was even easier. I mean, now I look at it and it's like, okay, I can usually find... I mean, I usually, right now, I find at least, like, one to two a week, which ain't bad, but in the grand scheme of doing things over the course of, like, you know, three fucking years, it's like, okay, that's a long-ass fucking time to go without finding anything. Okay, sorry, my bright, my, my freaking head does not want to stay awake right now. Oh, I could take this, though. Hmm. Fast Eddie. All right, that's just natural scavenging. 25% quicker. Ooh, I want that. Because that'll take less time to get into the, uh... Like, going into stuff won't take as long to get. Oh, I can't do secret stash yet? Who? Oh, Barber's gonna be at 20. Well, how high are you? I am mean, just pump it in. Whatever. Then, what can I put my points towards? I probably should just save up to... Building, like, this stuff. Like, the chem station... Which I don't really need the chem station. Because you can do other stuff and not be in as bad a shape. But I think steel, steel smithing I will need at some point. So i got to save up for that. And construction tools has to be at 40. Well, you're almost getting up, so... Eh, whatever. I'll wait. This place should be opening in a minute. So I'll go in, loot them out, and then we will wrap this episode up. I got some money burning a hole in my pocket. And I have been hanging on to it for... Ooh, damn long, Trader. And this map is actually pretty huge. Like, there's still a whole southern biome area that I haven't been to. That I don't like to go to. Because my solo world, it always gets me killed. And I'd travel around here, but this place is absolutely atrocious right now. So, not feeling it. Because we're in the middle of a blizzard. But, it is what it is. So, I don't know. And I... I know there's probably some of you out there that are listening to me talk about shiny hunting that are like, I mean, I have no fucking clue what he's talking about, but, okay. So, and these episodes are kind of, like this, this episode is kind of meh. Didn't really do a whole hell of a lot, but it's because the trader isn't fucking open until like six in the morning or something like that, so it's like, ugh, it takes so long to open and then half the night you're just standing around here like, well, I'm gonna twiddle my thumbs, stick my thumb up my butt. Cause I got nothing going on. Yeah. Scrap you down and build another one. I don't care. I'd rather do that. Yes. Finally, you prick. Alright, let's shut off the fire. Give me my wood back. Good. Douche. Took 15 years to open. God. Alright, let me in. Hang on, first in line. Wait, sales you give me. Alright, we got a whole new stock. You better have coin. Secret stash, what you got? Ooh, fertilizer. Oh, it's nice for late game stuff. I don't need it right now. Books, don't need that. Ooh, ammo. Hello, I like these. I'd like to look at this. How much you want for all of this? Three G's? I'll take it. Wasted a lot of money, but you know what? Need that. Um, buckshot, I can make it the forge. Gunpowder, ooh, I need that. 
Need all that. Give me that. Yeah, what else you got for me? I need... Oh, I probably should look for fucking claw hammers and shit, too, huh? Uh, ammo weapons. I don't think it's in here. Is there, is there a second page? No, there's not. Okay. Uh, I don't need that. Resources? Maybe? I don't think he's got it. Damn it. He's got forged iron, though. That's not bad. Got some oil. Some food. Blueberry pie. Azalea. What the fuck is Azalea? Oh, no, it's just a random plant. Alright. Lame. Oh, are you telling me you seriously don't have what I need? Really? The one goddamn tool I need and you don't have it? Can I craft it? Dude. You shut up. Can I build a claw hammer? I don't think I can build a claw hammer. Then again, I might just be dumb. Where's the claw hammer? I thought you could build a claw hammer. I think that's what I still need. Is like the main component I still need to get. Hmm. I would have passed it. It's all concrete. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like it would be in tools and traps, but it's like it's not here. Oh, there it is. Hang on. I, duh. I am blind. Claw hammer. What do I need? Oh. Pfft. What the hell is wrong with me? Why did I not just build that? And this is why you loot every ounce of this shit. That's why you always come into the trader's place with the ideas of buying, selling, and looting every corner of his goddamn home. Because you know what? He stands behind this countertop and doesn't fucking care. Yet, I know in creative mode you can just drop a whole bunch of fucking zombies and not give a shit. Because I tried it once. I dropped a whole bunch of zombies in here, locked them in, left them for like a week. Came back. He was dead. I think there was a dead body on the ground that I couldn't loot. And... Yeah, all that fun. But... I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to base. We spent some money. So that's not so bad. It's a healthy thing to do. Spending a little bit of money. It wasn't so much impulse buying either, so... We did get some good useful stuff out of him. It's not so bad. We get back to base, grab that forged iron, make a claw hammer, get the rest of the crap we need for the workbench, and start getting this shit on the road. Because to be honest, I'm probably you guys are probably in the same boat as I am, where you just want me to start making progress. And honestly, I don't blame you. Because there's probably a lot of you that are just screaming at the goddamn screens like, dude, Fucking build the claw hammer. You're going around acting like you have to only loot it. But you could just buy it. For, you can, If it's not the trader, just build it. And it's like, you right. You right. It's my bad. My B. You good. I got you. I see you, homie. You good. So we just make this little trip back to the base. Get out of the fucking blizzard. Which, thank God, we're out of the blizzard. Now, look. There's a world... You can see, there's trash on the ground that I found nothing in. Look at that. The world is here. Amazing. Yeah, I don't really care that much. But, it do what it do. So, we'll get back to base, sort through our shit, make the claw hammer. God damn it, we're back in a blizzard. What, we hit the eye of the storm or some shit? Like, thanks game. I really like... Wait, do I have a flashlight on this? I do. I got a flashlight on this, but I haven't built a mining helmet yet. Feels weird, man. Look at that. See, this is alright. When you do a little bit of snow in there, you don't need a full-on blizzard. You don't need this shit. I don't need my visibility dropping below my ass cheeks. Like, come on. What is this? This ain't right. Look at this. There's garbage here. There's a whole ass road here. I'm almost at, I was sitting there, I'm like, wait, what is this place? And it's like, oh yeah, right. I'm almost like 90% of the way back to base. Look at this, there's garbage all around here that I have not looted to get my scavenging skills up. Wasted potential. So, yeah. All in all, I'll probably think of something to talk about in the next episode here, because honestly, as much as I love, as much as I could sit here and talk for 10 episodes about shiny hunting, I know you guys are probably going to be sitting here going, dude, You've been talking about this for three hours. How the fuck are you alive? 
To be honest, I don't even know myself. But, whatever. It do what it do, compadres. And this series, I said it before, but I'm saying it again. The way I'm doing this series is not how you're going to see pretty much any YouTuber doing a series. Because I show you guys every little step of the fucking way. This 13 day timer in this world, you've seen just about every minute of it until the game broke or the recordings didn't work or something went wrong. Because to me, I don't like shorting you guys. I don't like, I've liked, I, as much as I know there are things like this I could cut. This whole running back to base. And I could probably do, I'd have to record an hour to get 20 minutes worth of usable shit. But you know what? I like being able to say I can record for an hour and get every inch of my content, every second of it, and give it to you guys. Because this series does pretty good on its own anyway. Like, it's one of the better series we have going right now, so I can't really rip on it. So, I do what I do because, you know what, it's fun for me. I like doing it. And I know some of you guys out there just like it when I sit here and do stupid shit. Like, for me, just rambling at... Do I not have feathers? Any of these? Hmm. I'll put the feathers in here. Because it goes with the arrows. And the honey is a medicinal thing. And then I will shove my lamb rations there. Shove my money as we spend about half of our income right now on that. Oh, the iron. I could probably... Eh, I'll throw, you know what? I'll throw the raw iron in the furnace. Because that does better than putting the normal iron in there. So this. Uh, let's try it on. Let's let you do what you gotta do for a bit. I'm gonna grab the forged iron. I'll make a claw hammer before we quit today's episode here because it's been going long enough. Didn't I put it in this? Or did I put it in this one? Put you in this one. Alright. There's that. Claw hammer. Bam. That's gonna take me a minute. A couple minutes here. So I will do that for the next episode. But if you guys did enjoy, do all the YouTube stuff down below. It just shows you guys like the series, and I would expect April to be a mix-up in the schedule here. We're changing some stuff up big, and I think you guys are all going to enjoy it. But with that, I'm going to get up out of here, and I will let you guys have some fun. So, see ya.